OK, thank you. I'm going to repeat the session, which I just had with others uh, who joined at 7 p.m. Uh, unfortunately, I, it seems the session was not recorded. Uh, part of what I said, I said before the session was generally to remind students that the recording for orientation will soon be shared uh, and also that there are two uh, pre-recorded videos for chapter two and chapter three that will also be shared uh, with the students. Uh, for this session, it's part of unit one of the learning component for business management practices three, uh, where chapter one focuses mainly on introduction to project management, Chapter two focuses on uh, project selection through strategic alignment. And chapter three on organizational project capability. <clears throat> uh, in the session, we discussed on what makes project management different from other management practices or activities. Um, what makes it different from operations management, what makes it different from marketing management, what makes it different from financial management and other management activities or practices. And it is generally uh, different from other management activities because every project is different and therefore each project has unique aspects to manage. So with project management, uh, basically, we, under, we ought to understand that projects are unique, uh, they are individual and unique. And in most cases, these are on a large scale, uh, they are also complex. And they are different from one another. Uh, unlike in mass production, unlike maybe in jobbing processes, Project management uh, is different mainly on the unique aspects of each project. Also, the requirements and scope, such as the technicalities, the resources and situations that entail each project are also different and they demand. Some way, uh, I don't need to do any study. I don't need to do any planning as I'm going to construct another road elsewhere. Context will now be different. The scope may will also be different. So there are always those unique issues when it comes to project management. With project management, the team is usually under pressure to deliver on time within the budget and to meet the required uh, quality standards. Project managers ought to understand that they don't have all the time uh, in the world. Uh, a project ought to be started um, and implemented within a certain period of time. It also has to actually run within a specified period of time that we have been agreed. So there are time constraints. Issues of budget, obviously, uh, these I'm sure all management students understand that uh, whenever there is a project, whenever there is an initiative to be conducted, you need resources. And these resources ought to be used uh, carefully or optimally to ensure that the cost is minimized without compromising on quality. The stakeholders for each project are most likely different also. People that are involved in the running of the project are most likely to be different, making project management a continuous learning experience. So as I said earlier, you can't say simply because I managed a certain project elsewhere, I now know how to manage all projects and I know what is needed to run any project. You still need to study, you still need to plan, uh, you still need to learn during the project. 
These are basically outcomes for chapter one, <coughs> uh, where we are saying by the end of this chapter, you should be in a position to define a project and differentiate between different types of projects. We have projects, we have portfolios, we have mega projects. What are the differences between those? Then you also ought to be in a position to identify and explain key project characteristics. And you ought also to be able to identify and present stages of a project life cycle and to be able to define project management and explain project management constraints. Uh, also, uh, we provided, uh, which we also touched on in this session earlier, an overview of the, on the historical perspective of project management. Uh, and the different project methodologies, traditional and uh, agile methodologies. Then uh, we also looked at the importance of project integration and uh, what it takes uh, or what entails international project management. Moving on to defining a project, a project is basically a complex, non-routine, uh, once-off temporary effort undertaken to create a unique product, service, or final outcome. The issue of uniqueness on the final outcome of a project uh, is important to take note of. It requires the application of relevant knowledge, skills, tools, as well as techniques in order to meet uh, or to exceed stakeholder needs and, and uh, stakeholder expectations as we have been stated uh, in this project objectives. So each project is its own objectives um, and targets. And it is expected that managers work project managers work to ensure that those targets are actually met or are actually exceeded. A project is further limited by time, budget, resources, and performance specifications designed to meet the needs of the customer or the needs of the sponsor, whichever way you may want to define them. So in, ter in terms of the different types of projects, we said we have uh, a project in general, which we have defined as a complex, non-routine ones of temporary effort undertaken to create a unique product, service, or any other final outcome. And an example that is given in your textbook is the construction of a bridge. But we also have uh, what are known as mega projects which are extremely large scale investment projects. Uh, normally, uh, they are defined by major infrastructure projects that are that costs uh, above 1 billion runs and those that which attract public attention. Uh, an example of a mega project is when the country, South Africa, actually hosted the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Someone was actually managing that particular project to ensure that everything goes as planned. Not to say uh, the, the, the team that they wanted to win wins, no. But to ensure that the stadiums are constructed, uh, ro uh, road networks are worked on, uh, the rail networks are worked on to ensure that uh, the, the people are able to move from one place and to, to proceed without any challenge. Just waiting for my power, for my network to be, but I'm sure and certain that we are together. Oh, 
Okay. So we move on to uh, programs. Uh, I, I am sure we looked at projects, make a projects. Now we move on to programs and portfolios, which are far smaller compared to what we have looked at. A program is basically defined as a group of related projects or sub programs and program activities that are managed in a coordinated manner to obtain benefits not available from managing them. Uh, are not available from managing them individually. So financial institutions may have a certain program that they use uh, and it's actually managed as a project. Then we also have what are known as portfolios. Uh, portfolios are basically defined as a component collection of programs, projects, or operations managed as a group to achieve strategic objectives. These should be balanced. Therefore, they include large and small projects, which are high risk but high reward, and uh, low risk projects as well as quick turnaround and long term projects. And these are also managed as projects. Our key project characteristics every project. That's a key uh, characteristic of a project. Uh, a project is also conducted through a series of interdependent tasks. Tasks that depend on each other. Uh, so you may it may have stages where step A uh, should be completed first, maybe before step B or phase A ought to be completed first before phase B. And phase C actually depends uh, on the completion of phase A and phase B. So these, as um, a project is conducted through a series of, of interdependent uh, tasks. A project also uses different resources uh, to complete a task. Uh, you need different resources to complete, to complete each of the tasks uh, of a, uh, that make up a, a project. As we said earlier, you do not have all the time in the world to complete a project. So a project has a specific time frame and a limited lifespan. So if you start to manage a project today, you are most likely to have been told that this project is expected to have been completed by this particular time. Even those that are constructing roads, there is a time at which that road should have been completed. Those build, constructing buildings, there is also a time with which that particular building ought to have been completed. A project can be unique. Uh, it ought to be unique, actually, and can be a once-off event. So something similar to that particular project can occur, but it may not occur at that exact place, especially in terms of construction. Waking Shaka International Airport was built. Uh, the, the terrain at that place, the type of land uh, of, of soil at that place will not be similar uh, with another airport that will need to be constructed elsewhere. Each project is a customer who is also known as a sponsor. Uh, so you run projects for others, you run projects for clients, which we may call customers or sponsors. A project is high risk due to the level of uncertainty. So projects have high risk, um, mainly because they are complex, usually on a large scale also, and they are unique. 
so there is that high uh, there is that risk uh, that is uh, involved then the quality the scope the costs and the time are equally important aspects to a project so these are the key characteristics uh, or key project characteristics that we should always remember then we also ought to be able to identify and present the stages of a project life cycle so in terms of the uh, stages of the project or the stages of a project uh, life cycle there are four basic projects uh, not projects four basic steps uh, one being uh, initiating and defining then the second one being planning the third one being executing and uh, lastly delivering and closing so with initiating and defining this is a role that is normally done by uh, top level managers um, in an organization so those top le uh, it's normally high level management or top level management and key participants commit to it in broad terms so the issue of initiating and defining is normally uh, done by top level managers uh, they are the ones who set these uh, broad, ter broad um, term objectives for the organization they are the ones who also accept or reject uh, projects that organizations will embark on so they are involved in initiating and also in defining a project defining in terms of scope uh, in terms of size in terms of uh, budget in terms of the resources that will be needed and they are the ones who also initiate the project so in an organization you may also realize that uh, top level managers are also involved even in applying for tenders to ensure that they win projects that they will then manage so after initiating and defining of a project the next step would then be to plan and this starts um, after the initial commitment is established and this stage includes detailed planning uh, setting of objectives and ends with all stakeholders accepting the entire detailed plan remember in planning there is also the setting of objectives uh, and there is also a setting of targets so this process of planning ends uh, with all stakeholders accepting the entire detailed plan accepting on those objectives that have been set those uh, targets that have been set The third step, which is executing uh, the project, includes two main activities or two main groups of activities. One being authorizing and implementing, and the other one being monitoring and controlling. Uh, so monitoring and controlling is basically monitoring and controlling the work that has been performed. Uh, controlling in this case, uh, not evaluation we're saying controlling because we are the intention is to ensure the intention is to compare what obtains on the ground with what we have been set as an objective or as a target so once there are deviations action ought to be taken so it's not an issue of just evaluating without taking action uh, and the this is done uh, authorizing and implementing as well as controlling uh, as well as monitoring and controlling these activities are done uh, to ensure that uh, the customer accepts the project deliverables so that we do not uh, do something that will not please or that will not satisfy the customer uh, then 
Uh, we should also know that some life cycles in other textbooks, they present these two groups of activities separately under executing. So the other st th stage three may actually have been authorizing and implementing, then stage four will be monitoring and controlling, uh, but the prescribed text which you are using uh, combines these. Then your stage four, which is your last stage, uh, is delivering and closing. And this stage includes all activities associated with the formal acceptance of the outcome and the ending of the project. Uh, this also includes the lessons that we have been learned, the resources that may have been reassigned during the project and the contributions uh, that we have been recognized also during the project. This is basically what uh, is depicted on the graph. Uh, is those four stages as we have discussed them. So this shows the start starting with initiating and defining and ending with uh, project transfer, release resources, lessons learned, and closure, which is your stage four, uh, delivering and closing the project. We should also define project management, and this has been defined uh, by different authors differently. But if you read these def definitions, you also come to a conclusion that they basically speak to the same issue that project management uh, involves or is a process of planning, organizing, coordinating, leading, and controlling resources to accomplish the project objective. Uh, it is also defined by others as the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirements. Uh, project management is also seen as a discipline on its own. So it can also be defined as a board of knowledge concerned with principles, techniques, and tools that are used in planning, controlling, monitoring, and review of projects. So basically it is the board of knowledge with um, concerned with principles, techniques, and tools used in planning, organizing, more controlling, monitoring, and review of projects. So it's a discipline uh, that is concerned with projects or with the management of projects. <clears throat> uh, project constraints or project management constraints. What constraints project management uh, the issue of time. So there are four traditional constraints impacting on the conditions of, a, of the project. These include the scope of the project, the time available to complete the project, the cost of the project, and the quality. As we said, in as much as we ought to minimize costs, we should not compromise on quality unnecessarily. Time uh, you do not have all the time in the world. There is a limited lifespan for each project. Then there are also four constraints that can influence the project. One being risks involved. Projects are associated with risk. So risk ought to be considered. Uh, then also resource constraints. Resources are limited but they have to be used uh, or invested correctly uh, or carefully uh, in projects. Then uh, issue of customer satisfaction to ensure that the client is satisfied with the deliverables of the project and also the stakeholders that are involved. So those they can actually put pressure on project managers uh, when they are managing projects.
Okay, so these are also explained here. Uh, and you have quality also coming into play to say this condition. Um, okay, these are the traditional ones. Uh, let me see the constraints that influence. Uh, stakeholders are basically end users, customers, or the people who influence the design of the project. Uh, customer satisfaction, we say satisfaction requires the project manager and the team to perform beyond meeting budgets and delivering on time. This requires the development of a good working relationship throughout the project to ensure optimum interaction, communication and performance with the customer or with the sponsor, whichever way you may want to refer to them. Uh, risks, we have spoken about these uh, constraint, uh, resource constraints, we have also spoken about these. Then we also looked earlier in the session at um, historical perspective of project management, where it started, how it has evolved, in where we are now. So in terms of project management, starting with uh, the Gantt charts that we developed uh, to allow uh, project managers to schedule tasks much easily. So Gantt charts were used to assist or to help as a tool by project managers or by managers in general to schedule tasks that will need to be performed in a project. So this will be organized and you can actually see tasks that have to be performed before others. You could, you can also see tasks that have to run concurrently or simultaneously. Uh, so if you read the history of project management, you will learn that that was started in the 1910s and things continued to evolve in the 1950s 1960s a lot of things coming in uh even the uh international project management association being uh, found in europe uh, and also project management institute being launched uh, to promote project management profession in the 1969s then a lot of other uh, developments actually took place in, 19, in the 1970s, which you should be able to also read and familiarize with as a project management student. In the 1980s, also a lot happened. 1990s, uh, a lot was also happening in the discipline. Uh, of project management or in project management in general, 2000s uh, until the 2017th, you can still see that things were happening and things are still happening. So it's also important for project management students to be familiar with what tra actually transpires or what is actually transpiring in the field of project management or in the discipline of project management. So if you find time, read also the uh, historical perspective of project management, how it is evolved. We also touched on earlier on uh, on the different project methodologies, where we looked at different traditional methodologies and agile methodologies. Uh, with traditional project management, uh, we said uh, these are um, okay. These are seen as pro, pro, uh, these are seen to progress through a predetermined sequence of steps or stages, with each stage starting only once the previous stage has been completed. Uh, generally, uh, they are linear, non iterative approaches. So they are not repetitive approaches, uh, the traditional methodologies. 
but uh, agile methodologies, they are focused on iteration, which is repetition. Uh, they are also focused on issues of adaptiveness, speed, and customer inclusiveness from the outset. Agile project management, this is basically project management that is based on iteration, uh, adaptiveness, speed, and customer inclusiveness from the uh, outset. So this, there are different methodologies under traditional methodologies as well as under agile methodologies that you should also familiarize yourself with uh, when you study. So most common types of traditional methodologies, they include um, the waterfall, there is a case study that you should read about the waterfall. Then the uh, precedence diagramming method, PDM, uh, which may be new to some, but I'm sure critical path method is one common method in project management, which most people may be aware of. Then there is also critical chain project management methodology, uh, which is also uh, common to many then program evaluation and review technique, the PET technique in project management, which may also be common to many. But it is important for project management students to find time and read these, including the PRINCE tool methodology, uh, of which uh, PRINCE basically is not a son of a king in this instance, but it means project management in controlled environments. project management in controlled environments. Uh, and this uh, figure in your textbook on figure 1.4 basically shows uh, uh, a depiction of those uh, project management in controlled environments processes. Then agile uh, methodologies, uh, <clears throat> that's where you find Scrum, Crystal, uh, extreme programming, system development method, open source software development, Kanban. Uh, these are agile methodologies, which you should also take time to familiarize yourself with as a project uh, management student. There are 12 uh, straightforward and clear principles of agile project management, uh, which you should also uh, familiarize with, which you should take time uh, to start. These are also summarized on table 1.3 in your textbook. Then coming to project integration, uh, this is defined as a critical aspect of project management, which is concerned with ensuring coordination among different aspects of the project. There is need for coordination. The it in terms of processes, uh, in terms of how things actually have to, to, to go in the organization, there is need for coordination to ensure that project managers are doing what they are supposed to be doing and they are not pursuing other objectives, there is need for coordination. Where there is no coordination, you realize that the general organizational values and the values or yes, and the values that are pursued by project managers will be very different. So there is always need for coordination. Um, the first of the PM uh, knowledge areas concerned with ensuring coordination amongst uh, different aspects of the project. It has been suggested, therefore, that integration management is the most critical of all project management activities. The integration in an organization, integration management, is the most critical of all project management 
activities. There is need for integration. Integration in terms of processes, integration in terms of the skills available in the, in the organization or in the project team, integration in terms of the strategy, strategic integration. Are the organizational goals aligned with the goals of the project team? Context integration. What are the new developments within which we are running, within the environment in which we are running our project? What should we do? What is generally acceptable in the environment in which we operate? Then complexity and integration. Projects are generally complex. They are generally complex, difficult to manage. And they require that there be integration to ensure that people work well, people are coordinated, resources are well coordinated. International project management, generally, this is the management of projects across borders. And you need to take into account uh, issues such as uh, different economic conditions, different cultures, climate, uh, geography, infrastructure, issues of security and politics, which differ obviously from one country to the other. Key focal areas for project managers when managing international projects will be the selection of a host country. And you look also at those factors such as economic conditions, the culture, of, um, culture the climate, your uh, infrastructure, security, and politics, are they favorable? To what extent are they most likely to impact on the success of projects? A selection of preparation of project managers and team members for international assignments. Uh, also, people should be able to be those who, project managers in these environments should be people who are familiar with economic conditions, in different countries, cultures in different countries, uh, who can be able to adapt and live in different climates. Uh, also, people will be able to deal with issues of politics and security, not to change governments, but people who will be able to work in those environments. Uh, this slide basically explains uh, what we mean by economic uh, conditions, issues of gross domestic product, issues of exchange rates, uh, inflation. Um, if you are not aware really of issues of exchange rates, issues of inflation, yeah, you may be in trouble as a project manager because budgeting will be an issue. It will be a problem. I was going to mention a certain country where at some point in time everyone was a millionaire. So if you are to run a project in such a country and you have to deal with millions and billions, uh, it may also be a challenge. If you are a person who is not familiar with economic conditions in different countries. Infrastructure, we are all away, legislative frameworks, in as much as these guides to how people should live, they also affect organizations, they also affect how projects should run in different countries. Political instability, political stability or instability and security, these are clear also as explained on the on the slide. And I'm sure we will not have issues understanding these culture, geography, and environment. Then basically the summit looks at uh, what is covered in the chapter and um, what is project management, how have we defined it, what should project managers um, do, uh, the unique characteristics of projects, different project methodologies, international contexts, or that is project management with an international context. Um, and obviously to remember that project management is 
comp is a complex and a dynamic field. Uh, so in the remaining chapters that we are going to look at, uh, you will now build your understanding in this area of study and practice, which is a discipline actually on its own project management. Uh, I took questions in the earlier session, uh, most of which related to the issue of formative assessment, which is now due not on Friday, but on Monday. Uh, I also, we all, uh, there was also another question. Um, yeah, it, it, it was uh, on whether there won't be any other lectures uh, of which I remember I said I will make myself available uh, to answer questions whenever I'm needed, but we have lectures as per the schedule. Then I also promised to record to, or to do pre-recordings of some sessions or, or, or of some chapters, which is chapter two and chapter three, and share them uh, by tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, take time to study. Remember the formative assessment. Uh, remember to complete the formative assessment in time. Remember to complete the quiz. Also, uh, remember to study the chapter in the textbook. Thank you.